It's Friday. It's the Lights Camera Cleveland edition, and Rob picks a topic. Ready? Go. I'm ready. Here's my topic for today. Dan Howe has left this show and left it to us. What's with that? It's insane. It's crazy. And I don't know who has lost it more, us, Joe Palo, or Dan Howe. I would have to go with the category of all three. You see, there is definitely a demographic shift when you talk about such a thing. Uh, we should have seen this coming back when Dan started doing things like spending all sorts of time on his boat. Running long in the end segments. Complaining that Gary Davis was keeping him too busy. Wanting to do more puzzles. Hanging out behind Target with those guys that we're not sure we trust. Things just got a little creepy, and uh, so here we are. So uh, I guess that all we can say as we start this very first, uh, our first time hosting this show, is that uh, we're going to still bring you all the, the things about Tennessee Valley, good morning, that you like. We're going to have uh, fake plants around. I, I promise that every once in a while we're going to have that low boil crab in a box guy. And on Fridays, Rob and Ryan might even show up and make things wacky. So uh, that's that. We're going to be back. we got a great show. We're going to be coming back with the big news, some Hollywood news, and then our very first guest, Sir Daniel Howell on Tennessee Valley this morning. Watching Tennessee Valley this morning. I'm Rob Alderman. With me, as always, the Hollywood Slinky, who's got us started with some box office numbers. That's right. You know, this past weekend at the box office, things were a little crazy. We had a brand new movie, Haywire, actually open in sixth place. And that was really strange. I didn't, I didn't understand that. If you remember, I gave Haywire a great. I think you gave it a great. Too. I think we both did. And uh, Haywire, the public not so did good. not agree with us. So in fifth place, we opened with Beauty and the Beast in 3D, the re-release of the classic Disney cartoon. That one yeah. brought in $8.8 .8 million, bringing its two-week total to, to 33.6. And that's because you can never get enough Disney redone and thrown up on, on 3D. Or if you're my wife, you can never get too many headaches and nausea from uh, three-dimensional films. Well, you know, here's the thing about that is that we should have expected this coming because this is what Disney does. Disney does like the movie version of McRib. <laughs> All right. It comes back for yeah. a very special they, they time. They give it to you and then they take it away. That's right. They give it to you and then they take it away. In uh, fourth place was Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, which was the Tom Hanks 9-11 film. This one brought in just, ten, right. just $10 million. Critics not faring well with this movie. No, you know what? It may be too soon for a 9-11 film of this kind. Plus, I think it's really hard to deal with a 9-11 film where Tom Hanks is already dead. Right. Like and when it starts. They're That's saying difficult. that it's a great book and it's failing as a movie. Yeah. In third place, uh, Contraband, bringing in $12 million, making its two-week total $45.9 million. Uh, impressive yeah. this one is still up there. And uh, that is my, uh, that is, I, I guess, a tribute to Marky Mark and his staying power. That's right. Uh, number two was Red Tails, opened this last week at $18.8 .8 million, the Tuskegee Airmen, George Lucas film. Um, yeah. This one's doing well. It looks it's gonna good. It's going to keep doing well. They're, they're pouring tons of money into it. But at tons. the top of the box office, proving once again the American public will see <laughs> anything except for a Nicolas Cage movie, oh. is Underworld. Yeah. Uh, Underworld 4 bringing in $25.3 million, almost double what Red Tails made. Hands down the worst film at the box office right now. And doing the best. And speaking of being the worst and the best, at the same time, it's time for some local news. All right. The local news is brought to you by our very own Cleveland Daily Banner. Not officially, but that means I read the banner before I came in here. Would you say you stole this news? I didn't. Or because is this an homage? I have, I have a subscription. <laughs> so this is not stolen news. This is the news that I pay for to arrive at my doorstep. And if we make people laugh while we tell it, then we can call it parody law. <laughs> well, here's the deal. According to the city news, or to the, to the Cleveland Daily Banner, sure. uh, the state of the city of Cleveland is in 
major growth. Oh, no. I never would have guessed that, considering the fact I can't find a parking space anywhere. There's all sorts of new restaurants, and traffic is horrible. Maybe it's time we hook the city of Cleveland up with the HCG job. I, diet. <laughs> it worked for you and Joe Palo. That's true. Brought the growth into control. I, I agree with that. Here's the thing. Maybe the city of Cleveland ought to consider growing in the area of, like, parking garages and parking lots and wider roads. And maybe a another Burger King. Here's one I don't really understand because I'm not that good at politics, but apparently Bell to vote against Haslam. Later on, we're going to ask our very own Sir Dan Howell what he thinks about this, but apparently this isn't good. They're supposed to buddy up, and Bell has come out on the paper and said he's going to oppose Haslam on some uh, legislation that none of us pay attention and to. And this really brings the question, who is Bell? In other news, uh, leaders in this city... And this had, this had quotes from both Tom Rowland and Mayor Gary Davis. So oh, both the county and the city news, mayor. Big news. This is the biggest local news. And I thought this was the best one. Is that leaders believe city and county to be okay. Oh, <laughs> we were worried. We were kind yeah. of concerned. We thought, can yeah. they be okay? Is that possible? I, but, well, personally, I, I was really worried about it myself. I mean, there's all this growth going on in the city. And yet... They're okay. Well, let me tell you what this one's about. I actually know a little bit about this. A couple newspapers ago, I was reading that Adam Lowe, one of the county commissioners, had come out and he'd said that he feels that the county and the city need to do more to open up a dialogue. Oh. And so he said, hey, we all need to talk a bit more. We need to get together a bit more. I think maybe some of this has to do with the fire merger. Will they or sure. won't they? Dun, dun, dun. No one knows. We're not sure will they, they will or they won't. I've got, but, we're um, being heckled by Dan over here. You can't see it, but off camera, he's giving us a, a little play-by-play. -play. Yeah. You know. Do you want us to say what you just said? You do speak for the mayor. <laughs> oh, he uh, says no merger. No anyway, merger. You heard it here last. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the deal. Is that Adam Lowe says, hey, we all need to get along. To which Tom Rowland and Gary Davis respond with, hey, we get along. We're okay. Here to talk about getting along is our very own correspondent, news correspondent. He's actually out at City Hall right now, Steve Hartline. Steve? Steve, what would you say the situation is like down there at City Hall right now? It's City Hall-like. Uh, would you say there's a lot of um, laws being passed and legislation being looked at? Yeah, there's some laws and you can't dress. You know, we noticed you gave up the sweater vest for the sport coat today, Steve. Yeah. You know, Steve, yesterday, you, you and your show voted me as the worst dressed at the chamber dinner, but today on your show, you actually said that I am Cleveland's version of Brad Pitt. What do you mean by that? Am, am I a handsome man? Do you have a question? <laughs> my, I guess my question is, um, back to us. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for being with us. In global news, this one is a good one. I've got some global news, then we'll, then we'll hit some I Hollywood I news. was not aware that the banner uh, reported on global news. Uh, the banner did report on this global news. I think it was on the front page down towards the bottom. Very well. Was that would that have been below the fold? Here it is. It was below the fold. All right. See, it sits on the table folded at, at my break room at this work, and so I don't see anything below That's the fold. Right. Well, this one is important. Okay. And here is what we're going to talk about. I don't know if you've heard of this, Daniel. I don't know if you've heard of this, but recently, SEAL Team 6, the same guys that took out Osama bin Laden, went and took out a bunch of Somali pirates. Okay? And the, and the news that kind of ties into where we are here is that the, uh, one of the girls that was kidnapped by the Somali pirates, she was working with a, a Danish uh, missionary group when she was kidnapped. Her brother goes to Lee University. So he was sitting around at Lee University watching a basketball game when he got a phone call saying, hey, the president just called us to tell us that SEAL Team 6 took out the bad guys and saved your sister. Well, bravo, SEAL Team 6. Here's all I have to say. We've also read, by the way, that SEAL Team 6 was involved in the Osama bin Laden uh, That's right. operation. Yeah, so these guys are like the baddest dudes on the planet. <laughs> They're like Joe Palo. Well, they're just like Joe Palo. Just like Joe They're Palo. very similar yeah, to Joe Palo. It's pretty deadly. Well, we have a little bit of Hollywood news That's right. before our, uh, we come back with our special guest. So. The Oscar nominations came out this week. Okay, I'm ready. So for those of you who were up at bright and early crack of dawn a.m. Yes. Eastern Standard Time, yep. uh, you might have seen a little bit of that. 
for best actor in a leading role, uh, we had uh, a bunch of people with crazy names that are hard to pronounce. Yeah. And then also George Clooney for The Descendants, Gary Oldman for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Uh, that's Gary Oldman's first nomination, by the way, which is very impressive. Uh, and Brad Pitt, uh, also known as Rob Alderman of, of Hollywood. That's right. Uh, Brad Pitt was nominated for Moneyball. Uh, the two folks with hard to pronounce names were Demian Bashir for A Better Life and uh, Jean Dujardin for The Artist. Um, in uh, actors in the supporting role, Kenneth Branagh for My Week with Marilyn, Jonah Hill for Moneyball, a little surprise there. Jonah Hill, normally a comedy guy. He was awful good in that film, and he wasn't terribly hilarious. That's right. Nick, he was good, yeah. Nick Nolte in Warrior, uh, which sounds like a biopic about himself. You know, everybody loved Warrior. Yeah? Yeah, you know, critics loved Warrior. I haven't seen it yet. They say it is the Rocky of mixed martial arts fighting, that it's really, really there good. There you go. Know. We're going to check it out. Uh, Christopher Plummer in Beginners and Max von Sydow in Extremely Loud and Incredibly Cro Close. The interesting thing about Christopher Plummer and Max von Sydow is they are both 82 years old. Um, make And if either of them were to win this category, they would be the oldest oldest people to ever win an Oscar at 82 years old. The hmm. record the record's currently held by Jessica Tandy for Driving Miss Daisy, who of course at the time was 80. Well, can you tell me a little bit about uh, our actresses? Sure, the best actress is Glenn Close in Albert Noobs. It's Albert Nobbs. I yeah. just said Noobs because uh, I'm dumb. Yeah. Uh, Viola Davis in The Help, Rooney Mara in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Meryl Streep in The Iron Lady, and Michelle Williams in My Week with Marilyn. Interestingly enough, uh, Michelle Williams playing Marilyn Monroe, an actress who was never actually nominated for an Oscar, and she wins, er, and she is nominated. That's interesting. That took me a minute to wrap my mind around what you right. were saying. Sorry, I'm she slow. Was, she's Oscar nominated I'm for slow. playing a woman who that was, was never, never Oscar, Oscar nominated. nominated. Yeah, that's fair. That's so, fair. Um, this is Meryl Streep's 17th Oscar nomination, which, of course, may, she is the most nominated female in Oscar history and has been for quite a few nominations. Well, we're about to have to go to uh, commercial before we bring on our first guest. Sure. So can you hit us up just real quick with the uh, best picture? Well, best picture's 10, 10 movies this year. It's The Artist, uh, The Descendants, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, The Help, Hugo, Midnight in Paris, Moneyball, The Tree of Life, because heaven forbid Terrence Malick not get nominated if he ever makes a movie, uh, and War Horse, which of course is Steven Spielberg. Um, Steven Spielberg was not nominated as Best Director, though, which means uh, odds are against him winning. Uh, only three times in Oscar history has a Best Picture film ever been chosen that was not also nominated for Best Director. Well, speaking of the Best Director, we're about to go to commercial, but in a minute, we're going to be right back with Sir Daniel Howell, our very first guest on uh, this Lights, Camera, Cleveland edition of Tennessee Valley this morning. Don't go we'll be away. back in a minute. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. 
I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Uh, I wish we had that. Man. Uh, Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. Goodbye, <laughs> Emmy nomination. <laughs> Hello, uh, Razzie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, we are back uh, here on the Friday Tennessee Valley this morning special edition of Lights Camera Cleveland. And for those of you just joining us, we're Sir sorry. Dan Howe. <laughs> yeah, we, we apologize ahead of, uh, ahead of time, but Sir Dan Howe has announced that it is time to hang up his boots. That's right. Keep on walking. And he has turned the reins of this glorious establishment over to myself and the Slinky. Um, so to Dan, we say yeah. thank you very much for this honor. You're welcome. That's right, Dan. And to the people at home, we say that we are sorry. That's well, right. We have, I've what decided, are you doing? I've decided <laughs> what that. Uh, what are you doing? What I'm going to do is pass the torch. <laughs> there's that's a, there's pass, fire pass in this. Pass the torch. What am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> I don't know. That's dangerous. I'm, it's it's terrifying. Terrifying. You watch the news. Now I get this. Now <laughs> it's, I, it's your torch now. You do well, now you it's my with. gross, soggy, <laughs> wet torch. <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, of all the stunts we ever pulled on you, I don't think we, we ever lit a fire in the studio. We had crazy mannequins, but we I'll never set the fire alarms off. You know what the people at home don't know? You know what you don't know? Is a minute ago, Dan handed this to me, and he said I was going to get thirsty. And, I, and he was like, I thought he was taking care of me. I was. Because I thought he was, was. taking care of me, and he said, you're going to need this. And so I <laughs> sent it back here, but I didn't know you meant... Yeah. I was going to need this. Yeah, you, you needed that. Because you have you to know. pass the torch. It's a rule. I it mean, is. Well, you, you know, we have well, another rule is that there there needs to be uh, parting gifts for those who are going right. away. Oh, that's right. I see so, uh, a setup coming So here. we have prepared. No setup. I no, this is legit. Do I need to lean to the left? Because I think only half of me is on the show. No, we asked them no, to cut you off. No, that's a tiny off. TV. Okay. We decided that since you're leaving, it really didn't matter. It didn't right. matter. And we thought, <laughs> I'm you, always, anyway. you always cut we us wanted off, to put we'll you, cut you yeah, off. Yeah, and we wanted to put you in the middle. But uh, they said if you're in the middle, that the guest then has to look both ways. Right. That's right. Which I realize now I've been doing for a year. <laughs> yeah. But, apparently but nobody okay ever wanted to you. put one camera on <laughs> me, Jennifer. Well, you know, I tried to help. I scooted this chair a little forward. Today. I like it. It I makes me feel better. Helps. Well, right. let, me, let me just sit and I'm going to make an observation. I'd yes. love you to. Uh, uh, I just noticed that uh, I dressed up for you guys. Thank you. Yes. We appreciate and that. And I just want to congratulate Ryan for dressing up finally. He did. He <laughs> dressed I mean, up. After a year of you know, being a guest on my That's show right. when I was host. He did. It's the first time he's worn a vest and a tie. I just have to look dapper. He dressed with, up I'm, I'm very, on a show with the Brad nice. Pitt of Cleveland. That's and, right. And I couldn't, of course, because of all that stuff Steve Hartline said about me, yeah. I couldn't in good conscience wear a tie <laughs> today because then they would be like, oh, you didn't wear one at the chamber dinner, and here <laughs> I'd be. Well, but we, anyway, yeah, we've got some important things for you. Right. First, first of all, you know, we just like to, to – Thank you for all that you've done in teaching us. You know, everything we've learned about how to be on tele television oh. has come from you, and we are very, <laughs> that's, that's really very sad. thankful. Really true. And is that a backhanded compliment? No, 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 no not at all. We want to make sure that the people out there understand that we appreciate you and everything you've done. You've really taken us under your wing this Punching. last year and uh, made certain that we didn't fail at television. That's right. And so or we have done your best. <laughs> so we have decided to uh, share with the folks at home and with you, you know, I mean, you, you gave us some, some great material, not the least of which was the fact that you love talking love, monkeys. You absolutely love, love them. Right. Um, and we appreciate that. I and tried so, to help you as much so as possible. So we've decided uh, to put together a little video for you uh -huh. to kind of show, it, it's a memorial tribute, if you will, oh, to, to no. Sir Daniel yeah. Howe. Oh, no. Um, 
And uh, we're going to we're going to play that in just a moment. But while we're getting ready to play that, we've got a couple of parting gifts. A couple parting for gifts you. for you. Parting um, gifts. And this isn't the end. You're still going to be with us through right. the show. But first, first of all, is a, your own personal DVD copy of the video we're about to show. Because this is for you because you're going to want to show this forever <laughs> and ever and ever. Is this going to show up on YouTube and be seen around this the world? This may already be on YouTube. <laughs> in fact, it's been on YouTube for a week. It has. <laughs> Um, but the folks at home can watch this again and again if they go right. to our website, uh, lightscameracleveland.com. It's also yes. going to be on the WTMB YouTube That's right. Uh, so channel. you're going to definitely okay. get to see this. So, uh, the okay. second thing is is uh, this is a certificate of achievement for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Very official. If this you notice, reads, it has printing uh, around the edge. This and who reads, signed it? Certificate of achievement. This certifies Sir Daniel Howe that on this 27th day of January 2012 has successfully completed his outstanding tenure <laughs> as host of Tennessee Valley This Morning on local Cleveland Tennessee television station. Oh, that's so we want to make sure that we give this to you. I okay. will frame that and put it in this my is, office. This is for you. It has a special spot right in file And that's 13. been signed okay. by the new host. Sir Daniel Howe. That's right. Sir Daniel Howe is being recognized so for I have a title team. now. You also okay. get a copy of our, a free copy of our home edition at Lights CameraCleveland.com. Okay. Just right. go there. Just go yep. there. And then okay. it'll be there. Um, and then lastly, we've also got you, because we know that in your retirement, you're going to have lots of free time when the right. bingo is not Right now, on. you oh, think no, I see this that coming. retirement is fantastic. You think that retirement <laughs> is all boats and hanging out uh, in extravagant downtown Cleveland with a beautiful blonde woman on your arm. And even well, though, what can I say? That's yeah. what you think. And even though Social Security may pay you more than this show did, <laughs> <laughs> we thought that we would help That's out right. a little, and we have for because you this monkey puzzle. The monkey puzzle. Oh, monkey puzzle. I love the monkey puzzle. This is puzzle. a 3D monkey puzzle for those days when you're cold <laughs> and alone, and it feels a little bit more like your actual. And age. you're not sh when, but, when you're not sure if the city and county does are it okay. Talk? Does it talk? At you, all? you can make it talk. It will talk. I in think your that own probably mind. the older you get, the more <laughs> that it talks. <laughs> It talks so, back and I talk to you. Are we ready to show this? Are we ready this? for this memorial video? If we're uh, we're ready. Right. Here you go, Dan. Oh, this this, this video is for you. Be kind, guys. Be kind. I can't believe it when I heard the news today. I had to come and get it straight from you. You said you were leaving. Someone swept your heart away. I see it's true So tell me all about it Tell me about the plans you're making Oh, tell me one thing more before I go Classic. That's classic. I love it. I know you didn't put monkeys on your faces though, well, because it wasn't needed. Those right? are for the Not two biggest necessary. monkeys you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was that was great. Like a trip down memory lane. Well, we wanted to highlight the ten or so decades that you have led at the forefront. Ten or so decades. Has it been that long? Or so. You know, time flies when you're having fun. It's difficult to it's, know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's time really to talk about you for a few minutes, Dan. Well, before you do that, I want to say that I'm honored that you brought uh, this monument to me and to my family here. You remember <laughs> Mr. Bell, Mike Bell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, Mr. Howell, Bell and Howell. Uh, we'll always be with you. Whenever you have this show, Bell and Howell will be right here with you. That's side very by side. true. I was not aware that you were actually related to them, to that Howell line. 
I'm probably not, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, hey, it was a good story. It right? was a great story. <laughs> I started wondering really where this show was heading for a minute. I, th I thought we were about to it bring out some, little, some surprise guests yeah, from the past. Yeah, it felt a little creepy to me. So, Dan, tell All us, right. what's next? What's next? What's next for Dan Howe? Where well, does he go see, from after here? After this show, uh, I'm going to go to the office, uh, have a cup of coffee, talk to the mayor for a little while, and then go to my office and work. <laughs> yeah. You, you know mean, what I realized? This immediate show. I realized that cutting to the individual camera makes it look like he's just in some closet. <laughs> hey, could you cut back to the? <laughs> I we're gonna have like to I'm work. In the closet. Look. Yeah, we're gonna have to work on our. Uh, I'm in the storage closet. <laughs> they told us that by putting you over there is gonna make you look better. And every time it cuts over to that, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, just uh, keep it on a three shot. Though. Yeah, no, really. What is what's next for Sir Dan Howe? Where does retirement take you? Where do you go? Where do I go? As you oh, launch into the well, there's no place. Relaxation. There's no place to go once you've been host of Tennessee Valley this morning. That's unfortunate because I had big plans. <laughs> that's when you've achieved the the pinnacle of success on Tennessee right, Valley. This morning, right. There's no place to go. So I think I'll just go home and quit. That ex well, what you're saying must be true. It explains a lot of Joe Palo. <laughs> now, Dan, you have spent so many years, of course, um, here in this community interviewing others yeah and now we're interviewing you and right. you've always asked people to talk about what they do yeah. you work for the mayor's office i work for the why county, don't you tell the people why mayor. don't you tell the people at home right the county, county which by the way is mayor. doing okay yeah he's doing <laughs> if you don't believe it he's, just ask tom roland he's <laughs> doing okay so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do for the county mayor i'm the uh well my title is executive assistant to the county mayor, which means you do whatever he tells you. That's basically. So it's kind of like one part secretary, one part gopher. Uh, mostly gopher. <laughs> mostly gopher. <laughs> well, he has an assistant that does the secretary type stuff. That's okay. Michelle Campaign. But I kind of. Are you trying to tell us that you have a sweet government gig? Uh, no, I work. Because <laughs> we just mentioned some things you had to do, and you said, well, there's someone else who does no, 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 that. No, no, no. I have to get to the coffee. Yeah. Well, for example, my day started. Uh, what is this, Friday? Yeah. Thursday morning. My day started at about 6.30. I uh, had to go to Chattanooga. Got caught in traffic. I know you're feeling sorry for me. Uh, it's traffic a first was world backed problems. up for like two miles at the split. It was raining cats and dogs. The wipers were going crazy. And I had to be at the Chamber of Commerce for an 8.30 meeting with Mayor Littlefield and the Chamber President and a bunch of people from North Georgia and Alabama and all this. I was representing the mayor. I, that's some of the things Now, I as journalists, because we are now journalists. It's true. Well, I know. We have to ask the hard questions of you. Go right ahead. Why wasn't the mayor there? Dan? Well, the mayor is busy. That's why he has an executive assistant good. to represent him. Represent him at. Uh, and where was like the that. mayor? Uh, he didn't tell me. He just said, "I've got <laughs> another engagement, and I'm, I'm, I'm got a. It's called well, we'll double having, booking. It's called double booking. Let me tell you right. this, Dan. We're going to get to the bottom of this when we have county mayor. Gary Davis on this show. I don't up. know when, but we're getting to the bottom of this Chattanooga <laughs> Chamber debacle, as we call it. And then after that, let's see, I came back to my office. Well, enough uh, about did you. Did some office work. <laughs> 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 then I went back to Chattanooga and hosted a show with County Mayor uh, uh, Jim Coppinger. I bet that show was not as good as hey, that this guy's show a nice right guy. here. Probably not. I've met Jim Coppinger. He's a, He's nice, a nice guy. It was a good interview. Yeah, that guy's a good dude. We need to have Half him on show. the show. Yeah, By the way, nice. you can see it Sunday morning at 11 o'clock on Fox 61. Plug. <laughs> little plug. Whoa, right is he allowed uh, to do that, Payload? Man. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> listen, uh, we're about to have to go to commercial. Well, before we do that, we're going to just hit, hit with you with, with four questions as we go out. Because we, we ask this of all of our That's guests. That's right. There's a new thing. Are they yes or no if questions? Ever, no, no, no. If you've ever watched this show before that we've host, when we've hosted it, you know. Right. In we the ask past. this of all our guests. I believe that you can know everything you need to know about a person by asking these four movie questions. Oh, so we're going to no. ask you, what is your favorite movie of all time? I would have to say... Um, Dead Poets Society. All right. What do you believe is the best movie ever made? Ooh, possibly, well, it would be a toss-up between right. uh, Gone with the Wind and Dead Poets Society. Okay. All right. What movie have you seen more times than any other? Hmm. I usually don't watch them twice. 
All right, so Once none. I've seen it, I've seen it. Well, that's I've seen, that, okay, that's that tells a lot. I've seen, that tells a lot. I've seen the Born Identity and the Born Ultimatum okay. because they keep rerunning them sure. all the time. And then the last one is, what do you think is the funniest movie ever made? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> Who doesn't watch funny movies? Dan doesn't watch funny movies. Oh, he doesn't let's watch see. funny movies. He was like, I, I kept waiting for him well, to listen. be like incredibly loud and extremely close. This this <laughs> section, this segment has been our serious talk with Dan Howe. Yeah. But in a minute, you're going to have to come back onto our territory. Okay. Because when we come back from this next commercial, we're going to do three on the spot and the preview review, which of course you know so well from the last year. Uh, we're going to talk about the movies that are coming up. And I've been to the movies recently. Good. So well, we're going to talk about it. In, All yeah. this and more next after this commercial. We'll be right back on Tennessee Valley this morning. I'm Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street, Northwest. And we're back. You're watching Tennessee Valley this morning. I'm Rob Alderman. With me as always, the Hollywood Slinky. Today's guest, Sir Dan Howe. And Dan, we're about to introduce you. You get to be the recipient okay. of a brand new segment that we call Three on the Spot. Slinky, tell him how it works. Oh, I'm well, excited. I have this magical stack of questions, and they are just a choice between two things. You know, it would be, for example, if we, you know, like true or false, you would have to pick one or the other. You don't okay. have to tell us why. You, you don't just have, have to. to you pick. can give an explanation if you want. You don't have to, but the rule is you have to pick. That's right. True so or we're just, false. We're just, no, it's not true or false. We're going to say this or this, and, and you, you got to pick, pick one. one. All right. Okay. I okay. We're picking them at random. This has a ton I'm, of different. I'm not looking. We're not looking. So you're going to give me two at a time, and I'll pick one. That's right. You That's ready? Okay. You ready? Gotcha. All right. Yeah. First up. First up is Inman Street Coffee Shop or Starbucks? Oh, Inman Street Coffee Shop, hands down. All right. Okay. Second. Twilight or Harry Potter? Neither. <laughs> you have to pick one. You have okay. to pick one. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. All right. And the last one? Perkett's or Orange Leaf? Haven't been to Orange Leaf, I've been to Perkett's. I like it. So I'll say Perkett's. All right. Here okay. We well, that's three on the spot. Now, 
Dan, you were telling us that you recently took a trip uh, to Unclaimed Baggage. I did take a trip to Unclaimed Baggage. Why don't you tell us about it? I went to Unclaimed Baggage. Do you have, we'll more, right to tell, <laughs> you have more to tell us about this? I go to. You were so excited. And I am excited. Out to drive. I'm excited. Tell, about, tell us a little I bit about I bought one of my purchases right here. In yeah, fact, I go us. to Unclaimed Baggage about twice a year in the spring and in the fall. And uh, you just have to keep going back because you never know what they're going to have. Because where is Unclean Bag? Scottsboro, Alabama. It's about, uh, from Cleveland, it's about an hour and a half. And you just go to South Pittsburgh on I-24, I turn left on 72, go through town, and it's on the left. What's the sound it makes when you go? Okay. Yeah. And for those of you at home that may not know what unclaimed baggage is, Dan, why don't you why don't you tell them about unclaimed, unclaimed baggage? Unclaimed baggage is where all of the lost luggage from the airlines go to die, and they get rediscovered and reborn. And you can buy everything there from really nice cameras to boots to shoes to coach purses to suits to shirts. I've got designer shirts I bought there for like six bucks. And this sounds like if my grandma was alive, this would be her favorite place. So it's and like, it's not a rummage sale. It's not like you go through and have to pick through everything. It's set up like a department store, like you're going into Belks or JC Penney. So it's, it's like an airport garage sale. It's really neat. Well, what did you well, get? Well, I went last week because it was time for my annual, biannual trips. And right. So I go, and I've been, uh, I've been kind of dabbling with this hobby for a while. I love photography. Okay. Okay. And I've got one of those automatic cameras, and it's sure. It's, it, it's okay. Okay, but uh, I talked to a photographer friend who's a real pro, and he said, this is what you need. So I go to Unclaimed Who Baggage. Who is the friend? Uh, he's, a, he's from Chattanooga. He's a professional photographer. That didn't tell us who well, he was. Well, I forgot his name. <laughs> so, what, so you're not real close is what you're We're not close, but, ah, but I did go. This is real close friend, no, though. That's I did go on a photography hike with him. His first name is Dennis. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and he was the pro. Smith. No, it wasn't Smith. <laughs> okay, well, tell us. Tell but us anyway, about your so he says you need to get X type of cameras. So I go to Unclaimed Baggage looking, and lo and behold, there's what he said. There, what he told me to get was right there in the case. So what is it? What'd I you got get? a Canon Rebel XSI with two lenses. Yeah. With uh, all the accessories, the charger, Look at that, everything, a bag full of and stuff. a bag full of stuff. And so while you know, when you got a smartphone, you can really shop. Sure. Yeah. So I'm standing there looking at this, and it's it's like brand new. I was standing there looking at this. I can tell you because I have that camera. You do. I can tell you that that what your that package you've got there is about eight or nine hundred dollars. Well, in today's prices. I, I looked up this lens. The lens alone, the long distance lens, was about 400 just for the lens. And so with that lens, coupled with the camera body, I looked it up on Amazon, and the camera body without the lens was uh, $799. Right. So you add two lenses, you're looking at about a twelve dollars to $1,500 package. This is pretty nice. I got it for $440. So wow. I bought it. Are you kidding me? No, is that's, that what, that's what you that's, paid for yours? I'm just saying that when you retire, you must uh, do pretty well. Well, we just put a few <laughs> memento pieces on here for I you. I noticed that you did. That another you another keep. parting gift. But yeah. if you're uh, wondering about unclaimed baggage, you just have to go look. You may go twice and never find What's the, the camera. What's the coolest thing you've ever gotten at unclaimed baggage? Uh, I got a London Fog coat, which I wear. It's a like a... Yeah. London, you know what a London Fog It's like a... Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Top coat. Right. It's one of those coats that Steve Hartline can't wear because it drags on the ground. Right. <laughs> oh, I was, no. Uh, I was up there about... Here we go. Ten years ago. <laughs> Here we go, I've folks. been going to Unclaimed Baggage about ten years. Yeah. I go about twice a year. I went to uh, Unclaimed Baggage, got this London Fog top coat, which keeps me warm in the wintertime. Yeah. It keeps the rain off. And I paid, I think it was ten bucks for it. And it still looks new. Well, I've got a question. Will you take us to Unclaimed Baggage next Absolutely. time? Absolutely. When do you want to go? Can we take a camera with? You, you can take a we're camera. We're going to go and we're going to document our trip to Unclaimed Baggage with Dan Plus here they've got in the a, future. They've got a Starbucks coffee shop. They have got a great sandwich shop. It's good food. And it's, okay. just, it's a fun place to go. All right. All right. Well, then. Closed on Sundays. As you know, there is one segment that you have enjoyed it while you were on this show. Yes. There was one thing that you did. You've often said to us, the one thing that you loved the most was what was that? The preview review Pre with yeah. Rob and the Slinky. I That's do. been your favorite thing. I like. And so that. we didn't want to let you leave this inaugural edition of the re-jump of uh, Tennessee Valley this morning without doing the preview review. 
And it's not just you. We're always going to do it with everybody. But you're the first person <laughs> to do it as a guest. All right. And so, Ryan, it. let's talk about the movies and what's coming out. I don't know what's coming out. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Okay. I'm ill prepared. I'm Well, I'm that was nervous. a short segment. It's wasn't my it? first time. You know, I, I'm just Let me just say, hearkening back to your first segment when you talked about the people who are nominated for Oscars. Sure. Yeah. I am amazed that Spielberg was not nominated for best director for War Horse. That is insanity. And the other thing that's really crazy Dan and everybody's talking about and I agree in fact, when I left the theater from seeing this film, I called him while I was still in the lobby, mm -hmm. and I said, this must be a, an Oscar nomination, and that is Andy Serkis, mm. who played Caesar the Chimp in Planet of the Apes. He's the, oh, yeah. he's the yeah, yeah. actor behind the digital monkey. Well, I read or heard that he was going, they were creating a category, and he was going to be nominated. Well, he did not get they nominated. Get he oh. has been snubbed, and it, he also played uh, Gollum and Smeagol in the Lord yeah. of the Rings films right. and all sorts of things. Well, King I saw Kong. War Horse, yeah. and it is just incredible. Yeah. Plus, it's a great so, story. So did that you cry? Your, did you uh, cry during you, War Horse? It'll, it'll bring tears to your eyes. Yeah, kind of really like kind of like the Dan Howell Memorial video. Yeah, well, kind of like the Muppet movie. Choke you up Which, By the way, that's probably one of the funniest movies I ever saw, was the Muppet movie. The Muppet movie? Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's really quickly, right, we so, have to get into a couple of films here. All right, well, speaking of disappointments, let's start with The Gray. The Gray stars Liam Neeson. <laughs> you know, and I like ne Liam Neeson. <laughs> I, you know, I But I, I can't too. bring myself to go this see this movie. This is a film about Liam Neeson, and he's like a wilderness instructor. That's Right, and he's out no, they're, in Alaska. Uh, they're oil prospectors, and they are flying to Alaska, and their plane crashes. Uh -huh. Right, but and, he's like there to be a wilderness expert, I and, think. And they end up uh, trapped in the, the outside Alaskan cold, and there are wolves at bay. Right. And, uh, and they gray. have to survive. They're and they gray are gray, and, um, and... Hence the term of the title and of And so the is Liam's right. hair. <laughs> so it's, yeah, you know, I gotta tell you, I've looked at this long and hard, and every preview that I have seen just looks awful. Yeah. I mean, Liam looks like he is overacting to a crazy level, and uh, I'm gonna hate this one. Yeah, I'm not gonna see it. I am actually giving this film a great. Huh? I like the trailers. I think it looks like it's gonna be a great ride, and um, more than anything else, what this film to me is supposed to be. Is this not supposed to be an action film? I agree, if you look at this film and you think of it as an action film, you may not really like it that much. Mm -hmm. I think this film actually is supposed to fall in the category of horror film, the way that Jaws is a horror film. It could be. And I yeah. believe that what this film is really going to uh, circle around is this man's struggle to survive against these the wolves, and mm. I don't think it's really going to try to do like this half-hearted character development thing. I think it's going to be more like Roy Scheider against Jaws. It's going to be <laughs> it's going to be Liam Neeson versus this big, huge gray wolf. Yeah. I think it's going to be full of a lot of scares. I'm giving it a great. What's I, next? I think you're giving it. Well, more I did th read that there's means. getting some criticism. They're saying the the wolves were harmed or something in the movie, which I don't. That's believe. because he's stabbing but, them with glass. Yeah, but those are props. We've you got clearly <laughs> not if he's getting trailer. in trouble for it. We've got to get those to the. We've got to get to the tree line. What? <laughs> what are you? T his, the acting is. You're awful. welcome to have your opinion. I've given mine. All you right. gave it a hate. I gave it a great. We don't right. always agree. Fine. Give us another movie to talk about. Uh, Haywire. Started last week. We, we talked, talked about, about it last week. You know when you stood us up last week and. Uh, did you see it? I did see it. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought I that, gave it a great. I thought that little uh, ex-marine gal who stars in the movie, I, w I wouldn't want to meet her in a dark alley somewhere. She's tough. Was the acting really good? It has a lot of good actors in it. Uh, you know, I didn't recognize Antonio Banderas until at the end. Yeah, Ooh. he's put on a lot of weight. Antonio. Well, no, it, at the end he had his shirt off and shaved. Don't tell his, us too much. He just shaved his beard. I thought, oh, that's Antonio <laughs> Banderas. I had no idea yeah. who it was. You were quick to recognize him once that shirt once was off. Once the shirt was off. No, once the beard was <laughs> off. Once the beard was off, but he was pretty ripped with the shirt off. Yeah. He was laying on the patio overlooking the ocean at the end. Yeah, was it, was it exciting? Well, <laughs> the movie, you got to follow the movie. But if you like action, a lot of I, guns, I thought it would look like it was going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun, but they obviously set this up for a sequel because there is no conclusion to it. Well, we need to talk about this, the chick flick. You know, the, the one about the gal who falls in love with the dude who's on the run. Yeah, mm. what is that called? It's got the, the 
My notes are on the first Go, there, go get them. Go, go get them. Can I, well, my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freestyle for a minute with, with Dan. If for I had a second. This, I'm going to oh, get oh. an assistant. The director's assistant is going to bring the notes over. Yeah, we need the notes. Yeah, yeah, just bring the whole stack. Yeah. Okay, this is I what wondered, happened well, when you're doing I wondered what had Dan, happened. This Look at this. Now I'm like, wait. This is what happens when you do gonna, almost live now TV. I'm Dan. <laughs> there you go. Let's talk See about what's on about. this paper. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, the first one we've got is, uh, um, he didn't even bring them to me in the right order. Well, That's what's up with that? Uh, one for the Money, starring one Catherine Heigl and Terra Nova's Jason Omar. Yes, Omaha. goodness, One for the Money. We can't, here's the thing on One for the Money. I'll take the lead on this one. All right. Okay. One for the Money is, is this uh, film starring Catherine Heigl. And she is like a bail bondsman. That's right. Who has to chase down an old flame who became a police officer and now is on he's the crooked. run for something he's done. And there's all sorts of sort of sexual, playful sexual tension between the two of them. But here's the it's deal. It's a lot like this show. Very similar. Hmm. Very similar. Yeah. Um, women cannot wait. For this movie, this is based Again, on a like this show. Very similar to the show. <laughs> this uh, film is based on a series of books. There's like seven books right. out there. Women love the men. There are like these two men. One of them's name is <laughs> Ranger, and one of them's name is something else. Are I know. They, that's what I'm saying. Just, are they, women love the men. You heard it here first. Are they, <laughs> are they the bad boys? Enough is that so one of the women love? The Listen, I happen to be. I I was at the. Uh, Athens Museum. I was at the Living Heritage Museum. That's in Greece. Okay. And they have a an all-female staff of people working there. Yeah. I was there earlier today, and they said to me, you know the show. You're going to review this film. I said, yes, we are. She said, you'd better give it a great. And all three of them went, yes, you're going to give that film a great. You're going to give it a super, super, super great. And they're like, they've planned an outing. They're going to go to dinner and go. Women love this thing. Are they taking None of us, us with? Even knew. I hope. And they should take us with and then all come onto the show together. Here is our, here's what we're going to say to you, ladies of the Athens Museum. When you go to see this film, you need to take Ryan and I with you. We will all go see the film together and then we'll review it together here. Wait, on the show. Joe's in the back room getting all nervous. How are we going to get 12 people on stage? <laughs> He's not nervous. He doesn't get nervous at anything. That's true. And what's it called? I don't remember. One for you the money. Just said it. One, One for, for the, the money. money. That's and right. So the sequel is two for the show. Then. Probably. Yeah. It probably is. That's the way women like their novels. They uh, do. Yeah. The other. Yeah. Other one is we need to talk about Kevin. Um, this is starring Tilda Swinton, who is of yeah. course the the White Queen in the Narnia movies. Right. Uh, right. It also stars John C. Riley, who is a, a comedy actor in Talladega, Talladega Nights, Step Brothers, um, a bunch of those. And, uh, and a kid from a bunch of TV shows. This is about a mom uh, whose son goes crazy and kills a bunch of people at his high school. It's like a Columbine massacre. Mm. And, and it's about how the mom deals with her grief and her feeling of uh, responsibility. Where did I go wrong with my son? Yeah. Um, you know, this one has the worst movie poster I've ever seen. It's an ultrasound of a baby in a womb and they have drawn in ultrasound markers uh, devil horns and a devil Ooh. tail on it and it is it it's ridiculous when you see it and you see john c Riley's name on it you think oh this is going to be a wacky comedy and it and is, it is not, not. Uh. here's the thing about this film slink um this is going to be the one of the most devastating films critics are coming out of this thing critics like die hard film critics are coming out of this movie and saying that they are needing to go see a counselor, that they cried a lot, that emotionally they're wrecked. This is one of those films, they say that- It's um, a lot like this show. Yeah, they say that, <laughs> that, Tilda, that Tilda Swinton gives the performance of a lifetime. There's also been a huge outcry that she was not nominated. And of course the issue is that the mom sees that there are problems with her son mm. from the time he is a, a tiny child. And she's trying to tell the yeah. John C. Riley character hey, we need to talk about Kevin. Our son has emotional issues. Mm. And the father is like, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. Yeah. And it's it's done so. The trailers, we've seen the trailers, mm -hmm. of course. I, I, too, was surprised at the at the poster. In fact, they came out with a second poster, probably because of complaints like, yeah. like the one you just gave. Mm. The other poster is, is her laying there holding the child. Um, 
but uh, this this film is going to be terribly disturbing. I, I'm giving it a, it's probably a great film, but I don't think that I can handle it being the father of two young boys. It may not do well in Cleveland. Thing. Yeah. It, it just may not. You know what I mean? Yeah. The last one, we're oh, running yeah. out of time, so we've got to be really fast. Yeah. The last yep. one is Man on a Ledge. This one stars uh, Sam Worthington, yeah. who was in Avatar, uh, Elizabeth Banks, Jamie Bell, who was Billy Elliot, and mm. uh, Ed Harris. And uh, we don't need notes now. This movie is about uh, an innocent man who is framed for some sort of jewelry heist. Yeah. Right. And he escapes or something and ends up on a ledge so that the his buddies can steal the real jewel and prove it was never stolen or something confusing like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's shot really neat, um, but it kind of looks like it's going to be an action movie that doesn't quite pan out yeah. as action-y. I give it a hate. I give it a hate as when well. When I saw the trailers, I'm like, how can you do an hour and a half or two hour movie with a guy on a ledge? It's, it's a just, lot I'm like this show, Dan. Wondering. Well, Dan, yeah, we're kind of on the edge. This here. clock says you're done. Oh, I, Mr. I I I clock says so you're done. So here's the thing I'm going to say. We're about to go to commercial. When we come back, we're going to do the greatest. But Dan, For look you. at the camera, and what is what are the last words you want to say <laughs> on Tennessee Valley this morning? This is Watch your chance. Rob and Ryan every Friday morning. You're too See, gracious. There you go. We'll be right back. Thanks Tennessee Valley this morning. I appreciate the money, Sir Dan Howell. <laughs> I'm gone. Bye. We're still on. We're still on. They probably. <laughs> Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television, Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning's Friday Lights, Camera, Cleveland edition. I'm the Slinky, this is Rob Alderman, and we're here now to do a little segment that we like to call The Greatest. It's called The Greatest because in The Greatest we take some topic of news and we relate it to the films and we tell you what the greatest thing or movie or whatever that may be. And today, Ryan, we could do no other than to honor our very own Sir Dan Howe by bringing the people at home the greatest talking monkey movie of all time. Why don't you kick us off? Well, we got a lot of different talking... You know, there is more talking monkey movies than you would think. Yeah, and you know, that's interesting. We've been doing the greatest on the podcast for a very long time. And that's sometimes right. it's feast and sometimes it's famine. 
And this is one of those topics when you when list. you start to look up uh, talking monkeys that you think is going to be famine. That's right. But, but it's when not. you get in there, there's quite a few talking monkeys. It's very easy to see how he would have developed such a love. Right. You know, we can start. <laughs> We, we were we were just what you didn't see was during the break. Uh, our, yeah, that made this seem a little bit more. Awkward. Yeah, during during the break, one of the guys here was like, "You have to say Curious George. You have to say Curious George." And so we added it to the list, and then he just came in as um, and and was like, "Curious George doesn't talk." Yeah, but you know what uh, what monkey does talk? Tell me what monkey that does was talk. Also in an animated film, Abu. The talking monkey from Disney's Aladdin. Who only mostly kind he kinda, of talks. You gotta listen really close, but he says a few words. That was done in 1992. That's it's right. a fabulous film. Uh, he's not the greatest monkey. No. You know, we're, we're counting backwards. You know you who know? else is not the greatest monkey is Dexter, who was the monkey in uh, A Night at the Museum with Ben Stiller. Now, here's the deal. I know that we weren't technically going to add this monkey. He doesn't do any talking that I can think of. But he's so animated and Dan loved Night at the Museum so much he was really that we felt like fan. we had to put it on this list. Uh, 1997, George of the Jungle, you remember uh, with Brendan Fraser? Yes. Ape. Right, an ape named Ape. That's right, he was voiced by, by Monty Python's John Cleese. Right, and, and this is the thing, that film was an abysmal failure like almost everything John Cleese has done, <laughs> almost ever. Outside yeah, of- Yeah, outside uh, of the first couple Monty right. Python films. And playing Q for two Bond films. Right, yeah, we yeah. should have known this was not gonna be good. Speaking of failures, Eddie Murphy, 1998, uh, Dr. Doolittle, there was a drunk circus monkey that talked. And Dr. Doolittle is one of the worst films I've ever seen, but nowhere near <laughs> Near as bad as Space Chimps Shoot. that came out in 2008 that actually features a bunch of talking monkeys. That's right. Uh, stars the dude himself, Jeff Daniels, uh, as a real estate agent alien yeah. uh, who encounters a bunch of space chimps, uh, one of whom is voiced by yeah. Andy Samberg from Saturday Night right. Live. I have a funny story with Space Chimps. Space Chimps is a film that actually I went to see in the theater really? with Rusty. He was very, you know, he was young. But we went to see it in the theater, and then um, it just, it kind of got into our house some right. way through, uh, through DVDs. And the next time we watched it, Rusty was like, can we turn this off? It's horrible. <laughs> so there you go. Even right. Rusty hated well, it. Well, this brings us to uh, number three. Yeah. Um, number three is... Uh, uh, oh, and we should mention real quick, 2008, Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, Kung Fu great, Panda talking A monkey. monkey named Monkey, played by Jackie Chan. But number three is uh, King Louie, played by musician and singer Louie Prima from 1967's The Jungle and Book. And if you haven't seen The Jungle Book, you need to check it out. That's right. Number two, Rob? Number two was my favorite film of last year, which was Rise of the Planet of the Apes, a film that didn't have to be as good as it was. But was. And ended up surprisingly good, and we give that to Andy Serkis. And we're sorry, Andy, we wanted to make you the greatest talking monkey of all time. And Caesar has a couple of words in the film. That's right. And certainly the performance is amazing, but it wasn't enough to get to number one. No. But here is number one. <sighs> number number one, one greatest talking monkey movie of all time. Cornelius, played by Roddy McDowell in the original Planet of the Apes, 1968. There is no monkey more lovable there is no monkey more creepy. That's right. <laughs> There's maybe no movie more creepy than the original Planet right. of the Apes. Now that one went on to spawn uh, four original sequels, Beneath, Escape, Conquest, and Battle, all throughout the 70s. Um, and, and Cornelius was in most of them, again, still played by Roddy McDowell, and then Cornelius Jr., played by Roddy McDowell. I'll tell you, this is so interesting that growing up, my grandparents loved those films, and I would see them all the time. And I, I got to actually know McDowell's acting chops through those films. And he's such a fantastic, famous actor who's done so many great things. Uh, and yet I grew up knowing him as Cornelius the, the monkey. So there's the greatest, uh, the greatest talking monkey Dan Howe. film of all time. So and this concludes Tennessee Valley This Morning Special Lights Camera Cleveland Our edition. very first ever Dan, we love you. We couldn't love you more. Thank you so Everyone much. Everyone else in Cleveland, we're really, really sorry until about next, what's going to happen. Until next, until next Friday, I'm the Slinky, and I love Cleveland. I'm Rob, and I love Cleveland. So let's all love Cleveland together. <laughs>